Okay, this is an article that I posted a few days ago on TikTok and Instagram. I waited because I wanted to see how fast this news would travel. I wanted to see if mainstream media would blow up this article like they did when they were accusing the so-called black Americans of hating on Asians to the point where Joe Biden had to sign an Asian anti-hate bill. But again, it does not surprise me that the mainstream media did not talk about this. Now, this information came from Yahoo News. There was a question that a person asked on one of my last videos when I was talking about Akon, and I mentioned about how the Asians uh, were supporting black people. And the question was, when did Asians ever support black people outside of saying that black people were attacking them or hating on them? Well, one thing you have to understand, and keep in mind, I'm not saying that there are not racist Asians out there. There's racist people from every group, even the so-called black people. But you have to be, you have to be mindful of where you're getting your information from and why you're being fed that type of negative information. Now, historically, Asians have always set up in the so-called black community. They set up in the black community. And of course, there's times that black people will go in, harass, rob, attack Asians. And then there are times when Asians discriminate against blacks. I've dealt with that myself in Midtown, Manhattan. So I'm not saying that there aren't any racist Asians out there. There are. There's racist people in every group, but Asians have done something that no other group has done. And this is the article I'm going to show you. Now, I'm going to try not to be on this too long. You asked the question, when did Asians ever stand up for black people? The title of this article is President Biden established a federal Reparations Commission now. Now, I mentioned in one of my prior videos that the Asians stood up, but the Africans are the ones that are saying that the so-called black Americans don't deserve reparations or should not get reparations. A force of 76 Japanese American and Asian American organizations now, this is not just individual people. These are organizations has demanded President Joe Biden to create a reparations commission for African Americans before 2023. Now, whether he do this or not, it's another story. But I think that just about every group out there that claim not to be racist should also stand up. That goes for the Africans. The so-called Jewish community should stand up in defense of the so-called black Americans receiving reparations that is old. It says in a letter sent to the White House on Wednesday, the groups led by the National Nikea Reparations Coalition call for an executive order to establish the commission, which would study the legacy of enslavement and racist government policies with the intent to develop and implement practical solutions for reparations. The push comes as HR 40, which proposed the commission to study and develop reparation proposals for African Americans is slated to expire at the end of the year. The H.R. 40 was first introduced in 1989, a year after the Civil Liberties Act was passed to create a commission that provided reparations for
for Japanese Americans incarcerated during World War II. Now I'm just going to read a little bit more. I'm going to put the link to this article on the bottom. You can read it in its entirety for itself, but I just want you guys to hear this. The Asians, listen, one of my best friends, and I know this is sounding like, oh, I have a, I have a friend that's, that's Asian. When I worked for corporate America, I used to work for Digital Equipment Corporation. And shout out to my best friend at that time. His name was Ching Man Kwan, right? Chinese dude. He looked like Jackie Chan, looked just like Jackie Chan. Very quiet, very nice guy. And he was one of my best friends, right? Asian dude. So I've never really had an issue with Asians, just the racist ones that I dealt with in Midtown Manhattan. You know, and of course, um, you have racist black people, you have racist white people, and, and we know that historically. You have racist Hispanic people or Latinos. So you have that in just about every group, but yet I think when it comes to that so-called Asian hate, that was placed on black Americans. They ignored the fact that it was white dudes were the ones that attacked these Asians they put that on black Americans. And then you even had black Americans walking around saying, we got to stop hating on the Asians, you know? So you can't believe everything that the media tells you, you know, they have an agenda and they're going to constantly feed you and bombard you with negativity. They're going to have you fighting against one another. You're going to think that everybody's a white supremacist. You're going to think everybody's against black people. You're going to think everybody hate black people. And then you're going to find yourself the enemy of the world again. So you have to really be careful what you allow yourself to hear. Now, this article was on Yahoo News. It was on MS, uh, let's see, MSN. And there was another news station this was on, but it was very small. You really didn't hear about it on CNN. You didn't hear about this. They didn't push this. But if it was a situation where some blacks attacked an Asian, then they would put us all, although it would have been one person, they would put, put us all in the same category, made it a black thing. It would have been on CNN, MSNBC, CBS. They would have blew this up. But now that you have Asian, 70 Asian groups, have now come together in defense of black Americans receiving reparations like they did. Instead of telling black Americans, get over it, you can't really, we really don't know who's who and all this other nonsense. They, they stood up and said, look, Joe Biden, we command you to do this, right? This is what you should do. Do it before 2023. Now, I've always said that talk is cheap and it takes money to buy land. You can get all these committees together and you talk and talk and talk and talk and talk and talk. There's no actions and then the election time come around and then you're going to vote for Biden because you think that he's going to pass, do an executive order on reparations and it's not going to happen. Do not vote. Hold your vote. And just like you guys stood up for J. Floyd, you need to stand up for reparations. The same way you guys went crazy and was laying in the street and riding elevators saying Black Lives Matter, and you were protesting, you need to do the same thing for equal rights and justice and reparations. And not just getting a check, but tax-free reparations, land reparations, education reparations, and a host of other things because even though they may give you a check, it is not worth over 400 years of damage. Your ancestors, you are completely cut off from your people. Don't know who you are. You still have the slave master's name, still following the slave master's religion, still despise and hate yourself. And look at your children. And I talked about the dial test they have. You can look that up on the internet, even on YouTube. Where they place a black dial and a white dial and ask which one is evil, 
the little black girl points at the black doll. See, so it starts at a very young age. Black Americans need reparations. That's why we find so many black on black murders that's happening because the so-called black Americans hate themselves. They don't even have a language, a nationality to themselves. That's why they're identified as black. You can't call yourself an African American because you've never been there. You have no connections to that. It's been over 400 years. But back to the article. It says, just as the Commission on Wartime Relocation and Internment of Civilians studied the impacts of forced incarceration of Japanese Americans in the U.S. concentration camps, we call upon you to courageously establish a commission that will bring forth the stories needed to fully understand the nation's failure to address the devastating and continuing impact of enslavement as the foundation for ongoing disparities faced by black Americans, especially in the areas of health. And then it says education, employment, housing, and environment outcomes. The NNRC wrote to Biden. And then lastly, it says, on February 19th, Japanese Americans marked the 80th year since the passage of Executive Order 9066, the law that forced ten thousands, tens of thousands of their people into incarceration camps. The date is known as the date of remembrance. Now, I remember that vaguely when I was growing up. I heard about that. But I don't remember it, you know, very slightly. I remember uh, what the Asians or the Japanese went through. You know, I learned about that in school. Um, it says the Japanese American Citizens League, the country's oldest and largest Asian American civil rights organization, joined the undersigned groups in their plea to Biden. And then it says, again, lastly, the travesty of slavery and its aftermath must be addressed if we are to truly become a great nation that we profess to be. JACL National President Larry Oda said in a statement, the 400 years of racism and denied opportunity have taken their toll on the community. The establishment of a presidential commission to study the legacy of enslavement would educate and inform the public and Congress of the harm that is perpetuated on the community. Now, I shared a story in the past of when I was in elementary school and I was younger, much younger than my, my nine-year-old granddaughter. And it was the first time I ever saw a swimming pool, right? And so we were told to bring our swimming trunks, our shorts and whatnot. So I think I was in like maybe the first grade, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing. And I had two teachers. One was named Miss Legal and one was named Miss Robino, right? And they had the hairdos like Wilma Flintstone and Betty Rubble, right? And I remember Miss Legal walked up to me. Now, Miss Legal, thinking back, probably stood about almost six feet. That was a big lady, right? Miss Robino, she was short. She reminded me of Betty Flintstone, right? But we was in line. Never forget, we was in line. And Miss Legal walked up to me and demandingly said to me, hold my coffee. And me being a little kid that I was, I said, no, I refused. So she didn't say nothing. She went on about her business. So when we went into the pool area, right, I could see it just like it happened today. When the pool area, the little kids ran and they jumped in the pool, the ones that could swim, right? I couldn't swim, right? I didn't know I couldn't swim. And um, it's my first time ever seeing a pool. So they ran and jumped in the pool. I ran and jumped in the pool because I thought that's all you had to do was just jump in the pool. So I ran and jumped in the pool and 
started going down. Listen, I would never forget how that felt, how how it felt to drown. Man, it's like, boom, boom. all I can hear is like, boom, 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 boom. I'm under the water. And every now and then I'll come up and I, the water I'll go right back on the boom. And I, what I saw when I came up one time, I saw them clearing off the deck. They taking all the kids out of the pool, right? They clear out the pool. And I remember somebody, I don't know if it was Miss Legal or the uh, lifeguard, had one of those long bamboo poles and put it in the water was, I guess, t- trying to tell me a little kid to grab the bamboo pole. And I was just going down. I was like in the bottom of the water. Boo. I, I remember seeing it. I could see it just like it happened today. And um, it's, it's like all of my air was gone. I'm just like, just, boo, just, and that's the sound of the water around me. Boo, just bubbling, right? So finally the lifeguard jumped in and got me out. It had me on the deck and it was pumping the water out of me. I didn't realize I was out. I must have been out or something, right? But it was pumping the water out of me. And finally I came, came to, the water came up out of me and all that good stuff, right? Miss Legal walked up to me, looked over me and says, that's what you get for not holding my coffee. And then she walked away, right? Keep in mind, I'm a first grader, right? Little fella. So got home, told my mother about it. And the school didn't even call my mother to tell her what happened. And um, told my moms about it. She went up. She went out to the school. Went upside one. One the woman went upside once. Went up one side of her, down the other. And Miss Lego denied everything. Oh no, I would never do that. I would never. Oh no, I would never. She was like lying between her teeth. And listen, if you got children, man, do not believe everything these teachers tell you. Your child is not as bad as many of these teachers portray them to be. You know, they will lie. They know that they're wrong as a $3 bill, man, but they will lie because they know that you're going to take their word over your own child. And Miss Legal stood there and she lied to my mother. I'm standing there looking at her. Oh, no, I would never do that. I would never do that. And I remember Miss Legal slapped me in the back of my head or whatever, too. But, um, but yeah, but yeah, that's what happened to me, man. I was like first grader, man. And first time I ever seeing a pool and ran and jumped in that <laughs> jumped in that water, almost drowned. And I think they, they got me out right before I drowned and whatnot, but they got all that water out of my lungs. And when I came to, the first face I saw was Miss Legal looking down at me and said, That's what you get for holding my for not holding my coffee. Now, this was back in the sixties. I was born in 1960. So this is back in the 60s. See, that's when racism and white supremacy was real. I'm not saying it don't exist now, but it's not like a lot of y'all think it is or profess it to be. You know, that was when racism was real, when blacks were found hanging, hanging children were found hanging, right, by their necks, and nothing was done about it, you know. So... I mean, we see the same thing happening today with police, you know, um, when blacks get pulled over for nothing, just driving, being pulled over for being black, you know, for being so-called black. I hate using the term black, but that's how racism, white, and this goes back to the reparation. This is what a lot of us had to deal with, you know, that's what a lot of us had to deal with, even the children, you know, so, so I have to carry that in my spirit for the rest of my days. And I can remember it just like it happened a few minutes ago. That's how clear it is in my head. And you think because a child is a child, a child is going to forget. No, children remember. Children will remember. They don't forget. You know, and you wonder why you may have a child that act out and you're trying to figure out why your child is acting out. Well, you need to talk to your child because maybe something happened. That affected your child in some way or another. But anyway, I'm off the topic. But going back to reparations, that was all a part of what the so-called black Americans had to deal with. Anyone that had any type of melanin in their skin. Right. So this is the article. I'm going to put a link to this article on the bottom. You can read it for yourself. Feedback. Tell me what you think. But shout out to 
my Asians out there to support the so-called black Americans and reparations. And I think more groups need to stand up instead of trying to fight black Americans because no one is fighting against um, the Ukraine getting all this money. Nobody is fighting against all of these undocumented immigrants getting all this money and you have no say and everybody's going on about their business and yet you're struggling. You are struggling while your tax dollars are being given away, but yet when you when they talk about reparations for the so-called black Americans that rightly deserve it, and they're not even asking for a portion of what is owed, now you have an issue, you have a problem. But yet they went back as far as the 60s or the 50s, and look what they did to Bill Cosby. Look what they did to R. Kelly. But yet you have other whites that have done the same thing and have done it worse in modern times and nothing happened to those white men. So yes, the so-called black Americans do deserve reparations. And I think more groups like the Asians should stand up, especially the so-called Jewish, anyone that's got any type of political pull. And just don't talk about it. Be about it. Make sure it happens before election time. Just like he stood up and signed executive orders, he can do that for the so-called black Americans on a federal level. Yes, it's good for the states to stand up like California, but yet if it's on a federal level, it's going to touch every so-called black Americans and you can identify who they are because of your social security number, um, your birth certificate, you know, and you can tell who's not FBA by their immigration status and who their parents were. So feedback, tell me what you think. Till next time, I'm fearless.